And finally, the story of one of the most remarkable discoveries in the history of British film and television. For decades, these rare colour images of pre-war television production gathered dust in a garden shed. I was contacted by Neil Campbell saying that he'd got some cine footage that his father had taken. He believed were of television programming at Alexandra Palace, but it was actually mixed in with some family cine film of holidays and that sort of thing, um, and was willing to donate it to the, the society. The footage when we first received it was in four reasonably sound film cans, considering they'd been installed in a garden shed for a number of years. The films themselves are a remarkable um, addition to pre-war television archives because, as far as we knew, no colour footage of, of pre-war television existed. Um, and up to now, there's only been about 15, 20 minutes of any known footage to exist. So we virtually doubled the existence of, of pre-war television in one fell swoop. The BFI sent the films to the National Museum of Photography, Film and Television in Bradford for restoration before they were displayed alongside the other half of the early footage. Historically, it's almost like the equivalent of somebody turning up at, um, at a museum that looked at medieval England and said, OK, we've come across some film footage of, of the Battle of Hastings. It's as unusual as that for us because we wouldn't have expected anybody to turn up any pre-war television footage. So it was a huge surprise, um, a, a huge bonus that we hadn't expected to discover ever. We've had this vision of what early television was like as being very upper class, very staid. You had to be very rich to afford to buy one. A TV set cost the equivalent of buying a small saloon car at that time. And so you can imagine that the kind of programmes that they put out were very sort of upper class programmes aimed at people who had the wealth to go out and buy the sets. But what we've discovered from looking at uh, this footage that's recently sur surfaced is that television wasn't like that at all. It was actually very exciting, very entertaining, very much like the sort of television that, that many of the viewers will recognise from the 60s and 70s. The films are clearly of enormous historical importance. But what of the people featured? Who were the early stars of this small screen? As you watch the footage, we see a number of characters. We see the first announcers. So there's Elizabeth Cowell, uh, one of the young female announcers. We've got Leslie Mitchell, who was a, a film star heartthrob at the time, who was the, the, the sort of senior male announcer. And we see them not only actually appearing on screen, but we see them in rehearsal and we see the, the relaxed attitude. Now, in addition to that, we've also got other people appearing. We've got the, the start of the television orchestra. So it was realised very early on that music played an important part in the entertainment. We've got the first television garden, Mr Middleton, with his, his huge chrysanthemums. And these programmes, the, the snatches that we can see off these films, shouldn't really exist. They should now be in outer space, the signals, the radio signals, hurtling away from the earth at the speed of light and having done so for 50 or 60 years. One famous figure making his small screen debut was instantly recognisable. A young comedian called Tommy Cooper is seen performing a bungling magic act in his trademark fez. The year was 1950, and Tommy Cooper went on to become one of the country's most loved and respected comic performers. He died while appearing on television in 1984. We managed to find a surviving star from one of the earliest films, Maureen Porter, who had somewhat mixed memories of her performance as a dancer with the James Hilton Band in 1938. We were doing five shows a day, so we did one show at the Paramount Tottenham Court Road and went to Alley Pally and did the television. And my dancing teacher was told to get me dressed and buy new clothes for me and have them all made up like, who do you think, Shirley Temple. 
Shirley Flippin Temple. Jack Hilton was there, Peggy was there, the twins were there, June Marla was there, I was there. I had never seen television. I don't think any of us had. Maybe some of the band had, but I never had. And we went into this building, Alexander Palace. It was most peculiar. The cameras didn't move. You moved for the camera. And the extraordinary makeup. I, d I wasn't made up because I was only a child and it, it didn't matter, you know. But the makeup, you could hardly get into the dressing room. It was, it was out to there and orange, you know, like kind of orange rice pudding. Ah, this is the piece of resistance you've all been waiting for. This is me in the dress, the very same dress that I wore in the video, the wonderful video we saw done at Ali Pali in 1938. And it was an exact copy of a Shirley Temple dress. And to cap it all, a close-up. Look, look at those curls. Oh, that was the bane of my life. When I came home to Ireland, I threw away the white buckskin boots and I combed out every curl in that bit of hair. And I don't think I've ever really curled it since. But what of the man behind the camera who had captured these stars on celluloid? Who was Desmond Campbell? And how had he shot such excellent and enduring footage? Desmond Campbell was the first person in the world to specialise in television lighting. In fact, uh, in the 50s and 60s, he was referred to within the television industry as the father of television lighting. And quite naturally, he, he would experiment on a programme with the lighting and he would have to make copious notes about how he set the lights up. He was a keen am am amateur cinematographer and he'd got his own 16mm camera and he was able to film some of the rehearsals and, and some other performances going out. The bulk of the material has lain in its original film cans in the garden shed in winter and summer and has survived and it's, it's absolutely wonderful that this stuff has survived and not been thrown away. And the twins, the Henderson twins, and they're the, the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. We never did that on the stage. Must have done it just... There's me! <laughs> There's me! <laughs> I think it's wonderful to have this footage. I knew that somebody was actually photographing, you know, using a camera, but I didn't know who it was, you know. I believe it was a Mr. Campbell. Uh, I wish I'd known now. I could have said hello. Thank you.